freshman year all the way to graduating. Four-year degree, bachelor's of science, civil engineering. You get a taste of everything, in, just about everything in here. Geotechnical, transportation, environmental, structural. So everything's basically weighted in here, uh, but, but we're, we're gonna break them down together here. Intro to civil engineering, I think is that classic, like you're feeling it out. You don't know what to expect. They give you that speech of look to the person to your right, look to the person to your left. Only one of you is gonna survive because there's like a 33% pass rate to people to get to graduation. So they, they like scare you a little bit, make you sweat, but also show you all the fun that you can have, but likely won't have. We're gonna go with a solid B on that. Calc one is just your calculus. Like let's, let's I'm gonna say let's flex on that a little bit. I think that's just a great time. We're gonna go with an A for that. Chem one, freshman year. I I liked balancing equations in chem one, but it just, it, me and chemistry just never got along all that much. I'm gonna throw it into a C. I liked physics. I think physics and physics one, calc one, just nice little one, two combo there. I don't think you're gonna go wrong. And I think if you do enjoy both of these, I think you know that you found yourself in the right kind of field. Chem lab titrations can go right in the trash. Physics one S tier. Really? I'm a I'ma keep it one for now. Physics two got a little crazier. I'm gonna actually drop physics two B. Cause I, I think physics two is nothing in comparison to physics one, but I just don't think physics one is S tier material. These are still just like your your core Core, core classes, gotta know them all type of thing. Gotta catch them all. I don't think these are particular, uh, they're kind of in order. Chem two, I want, ah, physics two is trash. All right, so it ain't just me. I'm kind of, chem two's gonna go in the D. We're gonna get our first D here. Straight duty. Chem one, maybe. Chem two, horrible. Now here's our first real, first real one. Gets you, gets you interested in civil engineering. Engineering measurements. You know, you're taking out the, uh, the topo stations, at least I, I got to, uh, and you had to do like an exercise to, to map out a part of the campus and get back and make sure. And with, you had to be within a certain amount of accuracy and depending on how close you were, Inaccuracy depend gave you your grade. So the closer that you were, the higher your grade was. The further off that you were, the lower your grade was. It was actually kind of dope. I really liked that challenge. Uh, but we had to do it use a topo station and go around a building and get back to the original benchmark. That was that was fun. And then like, you know, you have your little right in the rain book with all of your data, and then doing the the like back and forth calculations moving up in elevation moving down in order to get back to your uh your datum that was fun that was i'm going bang survey class okay yeah engineering measurements survey my partner quick the plumb kicked to the plumb bob after three hours and i nearly <laughs> killed him oh man that's a core memory we had the fancy ones so like the ones that you actually use out in the field with the laser going down and you have the plate and you slide the plate around and you shoot the laser down that was uh that was dope that was dope. And it's like a $25,000 instrument that you're holding in your hands. You're freaking out about it. Another just, I, is this too, too harsh statics? I, I feel like that is a fundamental S tier class. More so though, here, pump the brakes on this one though. Focusing on structural engineering. Hence, that's why for me, S tier. Environmental, dog shit. Charles, to your point, very much to your point, where are we at here? Oh, it's the last one. Structural dynamics, statics versus dynamics. <laughs> and, that's, and that's coming from a structural engineer. Structural dynamics sucked. Drop it in D? Yeah, all right, all right. Things moving around. I don't know, man. There's some witchcraft going on there. But you do get more comfortable with it, I think, if you're out here doing uh, seismic design because the, 
there's principles rooted in structural dynamics. You want your structures to be moving with the earthquake for a better performing system and all of that kind of stuff. I'm going easy here. I'm going calc two, calc three, calc four B. And I don't mean easy as in the class because I struggled, <laughs> struggled a ton, studied so much to get 60s on my exams. I felt like I at least had some confidence with Calc 2. I felt like I was understanding topics and I felt like I was preparing for exams and that I wasn't preparing for exams. Calc 3 was my hardest class in college, full stop. Almost failed it. And then Calc 4, this is where the light shines back on me a little bit. And I did good in Calc 4 and I understood differential equations. I, I was sweating going into Calc 4 though. Cause I'm like, it just keeps getting harder and harder. And I need to get through these math courses in order to become an engineer. And it's killing me because the type of math that we're doing has nothing to do with engineering anymore. At least civil engineering. But Calc 4, yeah, Diffie-Q's was, was different for me. It was a great time. I think I got a B plus in it and was never really stressing about it. Our next heavy hitter, easy. Easy S tier, strength of materials. It's your bread and butter. It's, it's, your, it's your trifecta. If we have our, our holy grail of structural, I mean, you got, you know you got strength materials. You know you got statics. What the other one is, hmm, we'll see. We had a class called Programming for Civil Engineering. It's kind of a blur. It's actually gonna be a D. It was all about, at the end of the day, learning how to do, um, what's that called in Excel? L uh, like like coding macros, is that what it is? Wait, what's VBA? What's visual basics? Why does that? Learning visual basics, yes! And like doing code and stuff. I know it's not like real code, I'm sure. I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff going on here, but I still don't know what the hell is going on with this stuff. Yes. The whole class was just about this. It was more like a lab. VBA coding. Oh, I don't think I got that bad of a grade just I know that the whole class struggled. All of us combined were just like, bruh, I don't even know what the hell's going on. Now, it ain't statics. It looks like it if you squint your eyes a little bit. Statistics, probability and statistics. I'm going a solid A. Followed right into engineering economics. Love me some engineering economics too. Almost, a, almost an S. Love it. And actually for all you PE, uh, takers out there, you know that there's engineering economics on the PE exam. So I know you've been studying that. Make sure you got that down. You got all those tables. You understand all those tables, how to, how to quick reference and get the values and then plug them into the equations. And, and since we're just on the topic, this one, I don't know why this one's in here, but it was on the list, uh, micro or macro economics. It was like a 101 class. You can either take macro, you take micro. I took macro. Uh, this really straightforward gra graph, graph go up. You're with all the business majors. They're all sweating a storm, trying to figure out y equals mx plus b and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. It was just not even that. It was just a linear graph. We'll go b. All right, gang, it's getting real. Thermodynamics. The first, the first slap in the face on the civil engineering side of things. And you know what's funny? I enjoyed it. I liked Thermo. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Unpopular opinion? I'm going A. Both fluids and Thermo were taught by the same professor and he was a madman. He was off the rails, crazy. Laminar flow, in case you wanna know, I still got it. Laminar flow, turbulent flow. Come on now. I think we all know. Very clear. I think it's our third missing piece, which forms the holy trinity of structural engineering. That's what a lot of it boils down to. If you're strong at these three things, or if you just really are passionate about these two things, if these scratch your itch and you really enjoy the process of learning these subjects, stick to structural engineering. That, that is a strong indicator with now the years that have gone by for me in the professional field, really strong indicator.
All right, some of our electives are slipping in here now. Can't all be structural related, right? Transportation systems. I'm gonna go be, most of my courses that I took were structural. And then if I had to fill any more, it was transportation related. Environmental engineering. Ugh, I can't even remember what I did in that class. I remember this though, water resources engineering. This class was also a D. Hydrology, water and wastewater, maybe that was it. Water resources, they're just, get them out. Get them out. Everything, everything environmental related, I, it wasn't it. It wasn't it. <laughs> it wasn't doing it for me. I only took the ones that were required. And I think, I think this one was like intro to environmental engineering. So, and then I forget why I took like water and wastewater, but maybe I had to take something else to fill it as well. Soil mechanics. Soil mechanics was difficult. I'll, I'm going to put it in a C. Engineering writing. Anybody remember this? This came about junior year for us and was a bitch of a class to get a hold of. They only had like one or two classes and everybody had to take it. And so there was a huge like log jam of uh, getting students to get into these classes and get through them. Uh, but by the time that we got there, they for some reason had figured it out and brought in teachers from or professors from the outside and taught a bunch of classes. So all of a sudden there was an abundance of engineering classes that you could sign up for and take. So uh, our guy was really chill. It was a good time. Concrete design. All right, step back. We ready? Oh, duh, duh, duh. yeah, S tier. Steel though, I'm gonna leave it at A. I'm debating it here. I, no. I think they're both gonna go here. I don't know what it was. Our teachers were pretty good. They were enthusiastic. They knew a lot. I think I think they stay put there. Concrete S tier. I know, I, maybe it does stay put. Steel ain't S though, I know that. Um, advanced concrete, I will go S tier. I had a dope professor for that. That was a good time. I learned a lot in that. Advanced steel, I'm also gonna go A. And I like steel, I, I thought I was much more of a concrete guy towards the end of school. Uh, and then as I got into my professional years, it sh I did a lot of concrete at the beginning, but then shifted over to steel. And now I, I kind of have this like reversal where I'm more comfortable with steel. If these are just subjects in general for the, for structural engineering, you, you bet you, you just bet you bippy they're going up there, but not, not today. Steel felt easier than concrete in college. I know, that's what all of my friends said. I couldn't quite wrap my head around the steel manual, I think was more my problem. Intro to traffic, or sorry, not intro, but traffic engineering. I would probably, I didn't take this, but I bet you this is B quality. ITS, so integrative technology systems, I think is what it's called. Anybody take this? My buddy does this nowadays. He's a transportation engineer. And he's, this is like his main focal point for his career now. I think this continues to grow and grow and grow because as technology gets better, the tracking more data and all that kind of stuff and finding more patterns and figuring out things. Uh, so that's my hunch anyway. I think it's also probably a beer. It's a uh, beer, B. It sounds cool, you know, I'm gonna go A. Didn't take it, I know, but I think that that sounds like a cool subject. Did I have pre-stressed concrete? I did not. The closest thing that we had to pre-stressed concrete, which I know you're gonna be like, that's not, that's not that, was bridge engineering. We had, in, I took intro to bridge engineering and didn't have to, um, but my friends and I decided to, and that was a horrible mistake. It's close to a D. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, bridge engineering was what inspired me from a very young age to be, to want to be a structural engineer. I loved bridges. And then as soon as I started learning about bridges, or at least through this class, very quickly didn't want to work on bridges. Earthquake engineering. Oh, to come full circle. How my college me would look at me now. 
I didn't take earthquake engineering because I was too scared to. You got me. It would turn out years later that you realize that there's so much more gray zone with wind design, so much complexity with wind design and designing for earthquakes isn't horrifically terrible. Once you start doing it, it becomes pretty straightforward for the most part. Keeping the unique earthquake resisting systems to the side, base isolation, you know, modal analysis and nonlinear analysis and um, all, you know, tuned mass dampeners. And it's kind of this, we're talking about a little bit of dynamics now, but those things aside, it's, it's really not that, not too bad, not too bad at all. But I never took it, but I, I'd be, I'd like to take that now. Um, if I had the chance again to tell myself to, to have the confidence that you'll you'll survive, I'd probably put it as an A. We're coming down to the finals. This one is so New Englandy, I feel like, but I took it. I took it as an environmental elective and I dodged all the other ones that probably made more sense. Design of fish passages. Can I get a can I get a W in the chat? Can I get an Amen in the chat for some fish, for some fish passages design? They're a big thing in New England, and I don't even know if they really work all that well. I know I'm probably not supposed to say that, but uh, we had a, a professor come in. He was an outside guy, and he was basically just a professional engineer who designed fish passages. So it was cool to learn real, real world experience from him. Um, I'm going to go B. It was just cool overall. Having to run calculations or... or Learn about people who derived these calculations that are all dependent upon fish behavior. And it's not like you can ask the fish what's going on. You're like, oh, does this does this amount of uh, flow like feel good to you? Or does the, the choppiness of the current, does that mimic your your natural you know environment and make it so that you want to come over to this strange passageway instead of just being dumb and like running into the dam and not going anywhere and dying uh, you know uh all that kind of stuff was it it's like man who who figured that out who spent the time to to turn the behaviors of fish into equations mathematical equations fascinating public transportation i feel like could be cool i'm gonna go b i have a soft spot for transportation engineers in my heart as you can see Environmental engineers, clearly not so much. Foundation engineering. Um, almost, almost an A. But it's gonna be a B. And then we come down to the beast. Finite element analysis. Hard class. And it was towards, it was right at the end of my career, my college career. Man, was it difficult. And the guy who taught it was a tough teacher. Uh, he was really nice though, but man, this was, this was a difficult subject for me. I'm gonna go see. There it is.